The next stock is coded BKW with seeding. It's by Django, Thomas Johansson, Eric, and oh, Martinson, and Paul Stankowski. 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 Right. And Eric is going to be the top. So, can you hear me? Okay, so this is a presentation of a paper called Coded BPW with CV. It's uh, based on joint work with me, Eric Maltenson, together with Chen Gu, Thomas Iwanson, and Faust Tankowski. I will begin with the outline of the presentation. So first I will spend quite a lot of time uh, with an introduction, where I first covered uh, the LWD problem, uh, then BKW, followed by coded BKW. Then I will go over to coded BKW with seeming, which is our new algorithm. Then I will cover some results in terms of some theorems and some uh, illustrations of those theorems. And finally, I will conclude the presentation. So, uh, in LWE, uh, there is a secret vector S in set QM that we're looking for. Um, and we can query an oracle, which uniformly picks a vector A in set QM, picks a, no picks a noise E in, from some kind of distribution, and then outputs a pair A and the scalar product of A with S plus the error. And usually the error is discrete Gaussian with uh, mean zero and standard deviation sigma, or equivalent to alpha times q, where, where uh, alpha is the noise factor. So we have some parameters in the LWD problem. We have the dimension m, the alphabet size q, and once again, the standard deviation sigma. An important uh, parameter set for LWD is the regular parameters where we set Q to be about M squared and alpha to be about one over square root of N. And in search LW, we want to, to find the secret S. There is also, for example, the, uh, the distinguishing problem where we want to distinguish uh, whether a set of samples we have are uniformly random or LW samples. So before I move on, just a quick a, a few points on why we want cryptography based on LWE. Uh, as discussed before, there is an average case of LWE to worst case of uh, lattice problems <coughs> reduction. Uh, LWE is, is one of the main uh, candidates for post-quantum cryptography, and it's possible to base to to build efficient cryptographic primitives on uh, LWE. And it's also possible to build uh, fully homomorphic encryption based on LWE. Uh, when it comes to solving algorithms, there are mainly three, ty three types. Uh, it's to reduce to lattice problems, which were discussed in the previous talks. Then there is Aurora G, which is asymptotically very very good when you have a very small noise, but otherwise not so uh, not so good. And then finally, there is BTW, which will be the focus of this presentation. So BTW, or Bloom Kalai Wasserman, uh, was originally proposed for LPN, which is LWE, where you set Q equals two. And the, the idea here is that you divide the vector A into equally sized parts uh, with fixed size B. And then you sort your samples according to the top B positions. 
and then for samples uh, that are equal in those in those uh, B positions, if you if you subtract subtract two such samples, uh, the first part gets zeroed out, and then you but so you you lessen the dimensionality of the problem. However, you add an extra noise term, so so the noise increases by. So so if the if the noise of E1 and E2 is is sigma, the noise of E1 minus E2 is square root of 2 times sigma. So in pictures, it looks something like this. So here, the length of the vector represents the number of positions, and the height represents the magnitude of, uh, of the positions. So with regular BPW, you step by step uh, reduce down the positions to zero. So as an algorithm, it looks something like this. You begin by partial, guess, partial guessing of the of the of some top positions. Then you do uh, reduction with, with BPW steps, and then you end up with uh, some reduced samples, and you use a distinguisher on those to determine whether whether your results is is from LWE samples or uniformly random. And in case they, they, you, you determine that they are LWE samples, you get some more positions and work yourself uh, through the vector. And, and if not, then you modify the initial guess. And now over to some improvements of BKW. Uh, the first important one is, once again, Albrecht uh, with, uh, with uh, lazy module switching, with the idea to to group together samples that are not completely uh, the same, but just almost the same in, in the fixed positions. When you subtract samples, this means that you introduce some extra noise, however, uh, which grows by a factor of square root of two for each PPW step. However, it allows uh, for longer steps. The problem here is that the the noise corresponding to the first step grows by a square root of a factor of two, by a factor of square root of two more times than the uh, than the later noise, and becomes dominant. So the idea to solve this uh, was to start start with a with a small step where you almost reduce out the positions, and then gradually increase the step size, and be less and less strict with the reduction. I should also notice that there is a, there's a, there's a transformation that makes the secret S follow the, the noise distribution. So if if the noise is discrete, uh, discrete Gaussian, we can make sure that the, the secret S also is discrete Gaussian with this transformation. So now I will cover coded B, uh, a coded BTW step, which is another uh, improvement of regular BTW. So in regular BPW, you use a certain amount of partitions to zero out the positions. The idea of, of coded BPW is to use a QR linear code uh, with parameters n, i, and b uh, for each reduction step, and to vary n, i between the steps. Uh, so, so in step i, you look at, at the vector, vector a restricted to some positions uh, which I denote by, by i here. And then you can write ai as a sum of a ci and ei, where ci is a code word in this lattice code c, in this lattice code ci. So, so if, for example, if you take two samples here, where the first n1 positions correspond to the same code word, c0, if you subtract them, you notice that uh, you only get the error, error vectors left. Uh, this introduces some, some extra noise compared to regular BPW <coughs> steps. Re regular BPW steps, however, it allows us to take longer steps. So in pictures, coded BPW looks something like this. You begin by a short step where you almost zero out the positions. Then in the next step, you take the the noise corresponding to the first step has increased by a factor of square root of two, 
and you take a longer step and then gradually you take the, the noise from the previous steps increases by a square root of, of two each time and you take longer and longer steps such that you end up with an evenly distributed error in the end. So, so as an algorithm coded big W looks something like this. Uh, so you begin with a partial guessing. Then if you want to, you can pre-process with some BTW steps. Then you do coded BTW steps, and then in the end you use the distinguished just as, in, just as with uh, uh, regular BTW. Uh, there sh it should be noticed, noted that there is also um, an FFT technique for coded BTW that, it, that uh, improves this guessing part. However, that does not uh, improve the asymptotics of the algorithm, so it will not be discussed further in this presentation. So now over to, uh, to the idea of the new algorithm. So in pictures, it looks something like this. Um, we have this sample here. We look, we look at the current ni positions. We map it to, uh, to the corresponding list here. Um, to a, a list here uh, where the ni positions correspond to the same code word as the sample. And we do it and we use some code in in a way such that if we subtract two values <coughs> a1 and a2 from this list, restrict ourselves to the current small ni positions we get something that is in norm, in average, smaller than constant b times square root of ni. Then we take this list, and we, we own, as new samples, we only add or subtract, some, subtract um, two samples from here, such that also, su such that the norm of those values gets smaller than B times square root of big ni. So now we have a guarantee that all of those positions here are small. Uh, this can be done by just trying to add or subtract all possible pairs. However, it's it's a bit slow to do it that way. So what, what we used here was uh, lattice uh, seeming techniques, which in this presentation will be seen as sort of uh, black boxes, which solves the problem. So the previous slide was the, the sort of the micro picture of how a coded DPW with seeming step works. This is the macro picture. So we in blue here we have the, the samples in the beginning of a step. Then we divide up the samples into different lists depending on the on the code words in the course in the, the positions we're working with. Then we apply lattice seeding to each of those lists to end up with uh, samples for the next step, which are small in the first uh, big ni positions. So as an, as an algorithm, uh, coded BTW with seeming looks something like this. You, you begin with some partial guessing. Uh, then, then you pre-process with some BTW steps, and then you do BTW with seeming steps. The algorithm is pretty flexible. You can combine plain BTW steps, coded BTW steps, and coded BTW with seeding steps in different ways to optimize the algorithm for different parameter sets. And once again, if we go back to this picture graphically of how the algorithm works, it looks something like this. You begin here, instead, instead of beginning with a small step, you begin with a large step where you aren't super strict with the reduction. Then in the next step, you take, in the next step, the seeding part of, of the BTW step, make sure that the previous positions don't increase in size. So this means that we can, we can, uh, we can get the same, for the, for the positions we have reduced, the, the added error doesn't increase. However, the cost of doing the seeding increases with the size of the number of positions we see. So the 
So this means that we have to take shorter and shorter steps instead of longer and longer steps, which we did for code in DPW. Now over to some results. Uh, first, uh, I I want to mention how how the asymptotic behavior of solving LWE typically uh, looks. So you have n as the dimension of the problem. Then you set uh, the alphabet size q as n to the power of c q, and the standard deviation sigma as n to the power of c s. Then the complexity of solving LWE is typically 2 to the power of cn, where c is a constant that depends on cq and cs. And for example, for the regular instances, we have cq equals 2, cs equals 1.5, and the previous state of the art is uh, 2, 2 to the power of 0 0.930n. So now with our new algorithm, we have the following results. If we don't use any kind of pre-processing, if we, if we just use regular code in DPW, we see these steps. Uh, the complexity is 2 to the power of cn, where c is this value. Here, lambda is the best heuristic uh, lattice even <laughs> constant, which is 0 0.292 for classical computers right now and 0 0.265 for quantum computers. Then we have another theorem when we use uh, pre-processing with plain DPW steps. Uh, so with the same setting as before, if also C is bigger than lambda for this expression C here, and this other condition is also fulfilled, then the time and space, complex space complexity is 2 to the power of Cn where C is yeah, this expression, and lambda is the same constant as before. Uh, so for the regular instances, this means that we have some improvements compared to the previous state-of-the-art expressions. Uh, with, if we use code in BW with CBIN without preprocessing, we go down to 0 0.9054. If we use preprocessing, we get 0. 8951, and then if we if we, we use pre-processing and also have access to quantum computers, we get 0 0.8856. Then I have a picture here for different uh, parameters C, Q, and C, S of, uh, of the, the different state-of-the-art algorithms and where they are the, the best one. Uh, we have excluded Aurora G from this picture which is the best algorithm when CS is smaller, smaller than 0 0.5. So the top picture there is the previous state of the art, where we can see that coded BPW was the best algorithm around the regular instances. Now with coded BPW with CVIM, we see that that one uh, is the new best algorithm, and we notice that not only does it beat coded BPW in most places, it does beat the the dual attack with access to exponential number of samples in some places too. Uh, compared to coded BPW, we also have uh, an improvement when it comes to the concrete uh, complexity um, for some regular instances. And also to, to, uh, to the conclusions, we have presented a new uh, BPW type algorithm that combines code and BPW with lattice evening techniques. We have asymptotic improvements for some parameter settings, including the regular uh, parameters. And we also have an improvement compared to code and BPW for, for some concrete instances. And some future work includes some asymptotics. Where it's possible, where it's probably possible to make some uh, minor improvements by combining uh, coded, plain coded and coded BW with ceiling steps in different ways. Um, also to investigate the 
the performance when we have a sparse sequence and polynomial number of samples. The other uh, future, future thing to do is to develop uh, an optimal algorithm uh, for concrete instances where we have to take a lot of stuff into account that doesn't affect the asymptotic behavior but that, that, that does affect the bit complexity for concrete instances. Thanks for your attention. Parameter sets that you get. How would the primal dual lapse attack for sitting perform? Um, yeah. I don't remember it exactly, but it's a little bit better than our values, which is probably why I didn't uh, <laughs> include it on the slide. Okay.